Greetings, my name is Bastila Shan. I'm a member of the Jedi Order. I know what you're here for, and I can understand your curiosity given the day and age we live in. For this tutorial, we will focus on using a flouter and text-to-speech model to synthesize my voice. Please don't get too attached to me, and Jedi are not allowed to have such feelings. With that out of the way, let's get started with the tutorial. We will be using Google Colab to run our Floutron model. All you need is a computer, a Google account, and a decent internet connection. First, we will start by preparing the dataset, which we will use to train the Floutron model. To access the KOTOR audio files, you have to search for your KOTOR game directory. Voice lines will primarily be under the folder named Streamwaves. The game directory for KOTOR, installed on Steam, will be similar to that shown at the bottom of the screen. If you're playing the game on Android, you can access the audio files in the OBB file. The OBB file is found in the directory shown on the screen. You can transfer it to your computer and change the extension to zip. If you wish to get Bastille's audio files directly, you can download them in the link below. After this, you can gather all your desired WAV files into one folder for data preprocessing. You need to download several programs for this particular step. These can be found in the links in the description below. First, download the convert.bat file, then the dd releases64.exe file into the folder containing the WAV files. Run the convert.bat file in the folder. This process is meant to convert the files into a readable format. You can delete the original WAV files from the folder and keep the readable MP3 ones. Next, you can download SARCs and FFMPG. These will be used to trim and convert the MP3 files for use in Floutron. After installing them, you can download the other BAT files. An example code of the BAT files is shown on the screen. You can edit the code for each BAT file to suit your audio file locations and where you'd like to place your modified audio files. This can be done using Notepad. Run the bat files in the following sequence shown on the screen. After finishing this, you can upload the WAV files to Google Drive. Finally, we will need to create text files for the training and validation datasets. These will contain the location of each audio file, what is said in the audio file, and the speaker number. For a good estimate, the training dataset size is usually 10 times as much as the validation dataset. After transcripting the audio files, you can upload the text files to Google Drive. We'll now set up the training environment for the model. First, you can open up the link to the Google Colab in the description. There are several modifications you have to make before starting. Ensure that you are connected to a GPU runtime. This setting can be accessed and change runtime type under the Runtime tab. You can then run the first five cells. These are meant to download the files necessary to set up Floutron. Next, you can access the files on the left-hand side of the screen. Download the data.pe file in the Floatron folder. You can use any application to modify this file from the script file. Add the following text on the screen to line 130. When you're done, delete the original script file and replace it with a modified one. Finally, we can move on to training the model. We'll want to start the model from a pre-trained Floatron libritz. These can be found under the section titled Training. You can change the highlighted part of the code to rename your model. Edit the highlighted parts of the first two cells to where your file lists are stored. Then run them along with the next three. If you run into errors during training where there's not enough memory, you can reduce the batch size. Lastly, change the trainconfig.output directory to where you wish to save your Floatron model. For more information, you can take a look at the config.json file in the Floatron folder. Another tool which would be useful in visualizing the training process will be TensorBoard. You can simply run these two cells before starting the training, but you must ensure that TensorBoard points to the correct output directory. With all these, you can start the training sequence. This process would take hours and will save checkpoints at fixed intervals. You can change the frequency of these checkpoints under train config.itis per checkpoint. If you are unable to finish the training in one seating, you can resume your training from the latest checkpoint. 
You can stop the training process once you have hit about 500 epochs or when the training and validation laws are starting to deviate. Now we can test out the model. Under the section titled Producing Audio, modify the code of this particular cell in the highlighted parts to match or save locations. You can then run all the cells under this section in sequence to produce your audio. The last cell is where you can input the text you wish to synthesize. You can modify the value of sigma to change the variation of your output audio. The range of this value is from 0 to 1. You can also adjust the value of AND frames for higher resolution. There are many other modifications that can be made to Flowtron, but you can explore that on your own. That is it for this tutorial. You now have a working text-to-speech model. If you wish to hear about the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise, you can click the video link on the screen. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.